you're going to have a real distinction in how this game is talked about. The rest of the country is going to be talking about this game as the next possible step for Colorado. The test for Colorado. Are they ready to truly compete in the Pac-12 conference? The point spread certainly suggests that they are not. But for Oregon, it's a very different equation and a different conversation. The conversation that I think Oregon is going to have internally is going to be all about Oregon. Is Oregon ready to take care of business against a team that is not enough depth, not enough talent, not enough experience, and probably doesn't know what it doesn't know when it comes to competing for a Pac-12 conference championship, right? That's, that's one of the things that I always talk about. You see teams that are trying to compete for championships that will sniff around success before they truly break through. And I think Colorado's got that feel to me. Oregon is a coming off a 10-win season. Oregon has the Nike machine behind it. Oregon has Dan Lanning, Bo Nix, and Bo Nix returning for another season and, and, and is thinking in much bigger terms and bigger stakes as it pertains to this game. Oregon now almost a 21-point favorite and should be playing at home against a team that is coming off a 1-11 season and had trouble getting by Colorado State. That said, I think it's a whole different football game for Deion Sanders and his crew. I think the Colorado or operation – is uh, much different than the crew that you have at Oregon. Because at Oregon, you are looking at this college football season as what? It isn't a stepping stone. It isn't a coming out party. It isn't a, hey, get to know us. Oregon's trying to get to the playoff. Oregon's trying to get to Vegas before it gets to the playoff and win a conference championship. Totally different stakes. Colorado still trying to figure out, I think, what it is and how far it can go and what this season means. And certainly you have to give credit to Deion Sanders and what they've done at Colorado. Make no mistake, Colorado's arrival this season is a huge success story. Not just for the Pac-12, not just for Colorado. It's a success story for college football. It has peripheral sports fans tuning in on a Saturday night at 11 o'clock uh, and in some cases midnight Eastern to see Colorado play Colorado State in a game that, you know, left the Colorado fans jumping over the rails and storming the field despite the fact that they were a 23-and-a-half-point favorite. It's kind of ridiculous, but also kind of a, a blast. Like, I am, I am all about seeing what Deion Sanders can do with his program and this team. And, and then conversely, I'm all about seeing if Oregon is truly ready to play the role that it's supposed to play in a game like this. Oregon, for years has talked about getting to the national stage, mattering as a brand, uh, registering uh, alongside Ohio State, Michigan, registering along some, some of the SEC programs. Well, guess what? This is the, exactly the kind of football game that a big-time football program sobers everybody up on, right? This is the kind of game where Oregon is supposed to punch Colorado in the mouth, supposed to win the game by double digits, supposed to uh, you know walk off uh, talking about, you know, hey, we have bigger stakes, hey, we have uh, bigger aspirations than simply trying to draw television ratings and sell some things during commercial breaks, right? A very different equation for Oregon and Dan Lanning. It's why this week I expect Oregon to do a lot of talking, not about Colorado, but about Oregon. I think Oregon will focus largely on itself, its own players, its own mission, its own uh, talking points, and I think it will try to ignore what is going on at Colorado as if Oregon is bigger than what is happening at Colorado because, frankly, Oregon is bigger than what is happening at Colorado. So keep an eye on that.